Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mackenzie Child, and this is episode five of five, the final episode in the Dev Tips Ruby on Rails from the Ground Up series. Last week we built uh, our Rails application, and this week we are going to take that code and deploy it live on the web using a hosting service called Heroku. If you haven't already gone through and built the Rails application from last week, just uh, pause this video go back, do that, and then meet me back here. Um, and we will go through step-by-step step on how to get our application live on the web. So let's jump in. All right, guys, so now we are going to begin the process of taking the application we built in the previous video and deploying that to a hosting service called Heroku. There's a few steps we need to go through, first of which is getting our application under version control and uh, up on a site called GitHub. If you aren't too familiar with Git or GitHub, I've created a video on my site called Get Started with Git and GitHub. Uh, just go to mckinseychild.me and search in the videos for getting started or get started with Git and GitHub. And this covers the basics of what you'll need to get started using uh, version control. So first thing I'm gonna do is back in the terminal, I'm gonna run git init to initialize a Git repository. And then if I do a git status, you can see all of the files from our application are currently untracked. So I'm gonna do a git add dot to add everything. Do another git status, you can see all the files have been added. All right, so I'm gonna do a git commit dash am and I'm gonna say initial commit. All right, so now we have made our first commit. Next thing we want to do is go to GitHub and I'm gonna to go to my personal profile and then I'm gonna click repositories and create a new repo. So I'm gonna call this a dev tips a blog. Whoops, that seems to be taken already. Say so I'll do MC dev tips blog. How about that? All right, cool. So I'm gonna create a repository so the next thing I need to do since uh, we're pushing an existing uh, repository is just copy this line, git remote add, and then the path to git. Let's paste that in uh, the terminal, hit enter. And then if we go back, we need to do a git push dash u origin master. Git push dash u origin master. All right, so that pushes up everything from our application. Now, if we go to that, so wait, our app is now uh, under version control and up on GitHub. So we are going to be pushing this up to a site or a hosting service called Heroku. Heroku is uh, fantastic. It's free to sign up, free to uh, get an application live, a basic app, um, but they make it super duper simple to uh, scale your app as it grows. If you have yet to create an account, uh, just click sign up for free, go through the process of creating an account. Then the next thing you want to do is go to Toolbelt heroku.com what this is is it's going to allow you to manage your account from the command line so based on what operating system you're using i'm using mac os x and it detects that by default so i'm going to uh, download the tool belt and let's go through and uh, install this so hit continue install then uh, enter your password. All right, so that was installed. Uh, let's make sure everything works correctly. So it says once installed, you have access to the Heroku command line from your command shell, i.e. the terminal. Log in using your email address and password uh, you used when creating your Heroku account. So it says use uh, Heroku login. Uh, so if I go ahead and do Heroku login, it's installing some uh, plugins needed for the CLI. Enter your credentials. So I'm going to enter my password or my email and then my password. All right. So it's lo it has logged me in. Perfect. So from here, let me uh, quickly close out of that. Back in the terminal, let's do a uh, command called Heroku create. 
and this is going to create the Heroku application. And then what we need to do from here is we're going to run a command called git push Heroku master. And what this is doing is it's taking our application from GitHub and pushing it to Heroku based on the master branch in Git. So let's uh, run that command. Okay, so if you were following along uh, and ran that command, you did get an error. I did go ahead and do that on purpose just to show you how to fix this. So the error is because locally we have gem installed SQLite 3. Heroku does not play nicely with SQLite 3. It needs a few gems in order to work properly. So if we jump back into our uh, Sublime and open up the gem file, uh, there's a few things we need to do to get this working correctly. So right here, uh, the gem SQLite 3 that we're using for our database, let's copy that and remove the comment as well. Then down at the bottom, we need to uh, add that to a development group. So we'll do development uh, do and then add that. And then we need another group specifically for production. And then inside of here, we need two gems, uh, the PG gem or the PostgreSQL and the gem rails underscore 12 factor that Heroku uses. So basically what this is doing is uh, we are going to be using the SQLite 3 database uh, locally and then the uh, PG gem and uh, rails 12 factor on Heroku. So if I save that, this is not in our application just yet. Uh, we need to run a command called bundle so that it will install those gems on our app. But if you only do bundle, you may get an error. So let's throw dash dash without production. So this is going to install everything locally minus the PG gem and the Rails 12 factor gem. So hit that command. It's going to go out and install all the new stuff on your system. And let's do a get status. You can see we modified the gem file in the gem file.lock. So I'm going to do a git uh, commit dash am and I'm going to say added pg and rails 12 factor gems for Heroku. Get status. Whoops. Get status. All right, let's push that up. Git push origin master. Git push origin master if I could spell correctly. There we go. All right, so now we should be good to go. If I push up this to Heroku again by doing git push Heroku master, it's going to pull what's on GitHub and deploy it to Heroku. So this time we should not get that error. Okay, so I believe everything worked correctly. You can see right here, it deployed to cryptic-sans-2637.herokuapp.com. Uh, Heroku automatically creates a random URL for you, but you also have the option to add a custom domain as well. So let's copy this and view our application. So you see, we're sorry, something went wrong. We can view what went wrong by running the command Heroku logs. So what is happening here is uh, we try to view our application but the post table that we created locally uh, doesn't exist yet on Heroku. You have to think of local and Heroku as two different things. So what we want to do here is do Heroku run uh, rake db colon migrate. And what that's going to do is it's going to run our migration files and create the database and that error should go away. All right, so it created the post table. So if I go back and refresh, beautiful. So let's uh, test it out. Create a new post. My first post on Heroku. Create post. Beautiful. So everything is working correctly. Let me see if I can edit this. Just say like, hello world. Update. Awesome. Everything appears to be working correctly. So we have created a simple yet functional Rails application and we have deployed it so it's live on the internet. Anyone uh, that you share this link with can access your uh, new application. All right, guys, we are all finished with this series. Um, I just want to say thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed them and you uh, learned something. 
um, and now feel comfortable enough to jump in and dive deeper into the Ruby on Rails framework. This video, uh, this video and this whole series, this video and series of course was sponsored by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community. Um, so special shout out to them. Thank you for making this episode possible. <clears throat> this video um, and the entire series was of course sponsored um, and this video and this whole series was uh, sponsored and made possible by the awesome uh, patrons of the DevTips community. So this video and the whole series, uh, so this video, so this video was of course made possible by the sponsors. <clears throat> so this video was of course made possible by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community. So I just want to say thank you for, um, so this video, was, so this video and the whole series was of course sponsored by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the Patreon, This video was of course made possible by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community. Um, this video and this whole spot, um, this video and this whole series was of course made spot, ah! So this video and this whole series was made possible by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community who have each uh, pledged an amount of their choosing um, and made all of this possible. To find out more about uh, supporting the DevTips channel and becoming a patron um, and getting all the exclusive awesomeness that comes with it, uh, be sure to check out patreon.com slash devtips. And of course, if you're interested in learning Rails or design, I have dozens of videos on my uh, channel at youtube.com slash mckinseychild that I'd love for you to check out. So once again, thank you all so much for uh, watching this series and keep on hacking.